What's going on, everybody? Ears up in depth. Hot off the heels of what was an incredibly mediocre Destination D23. Um, yeah, so we're here to talk about it. We're here to break it down. This is what a lot of people in Discord are waiting for, Jeremy. They were waiting for this specific episode. So shout Discord- out to Marie and all the people who are waiting for this. They were going a media blackout over on Discord until us until us can t- talk about it good. Oh. Yeah, until us can gooder about it. Well, yeah, I mean, this was an interesting... It was interesting. I So I did live stream a few of the panels on Saturday. Yeah. Sunday, there wasn't a live stream. I think it was only Saturday. I couldn't find it. Well, I think that's because there wasn't news on, on Sunday. Well, no, but there was like right? fun stuff that I did want to, to look at. Like they had a... Um, down the rabbit hole, which is like conspiracies, I guess, or something about, you know, Walt and the Disney company. They had a weird, uh, like a weird Walt panel or something like that, where they just okay. talked about weird facts. They had a costume contest, which I was planning on stream. Like I was planning on, that's the content I want to engage with. It's the fun side, but they didn't, they yeah. didn't stream it. Um, but on Saturday, I, I woke up at 530 in the morning to get, to prepare myself to start streaming the opening. And then the parks announcement, and it was it was um, all I could do to not pull the plug on the whole day and not do another panel. But I pushed through. I did the Avengers panel. I did the Epcot panel. I did the Disney Cruise panel. And I wish I hadn't <laughs> because, because we were talking about just before the just before the show aired that the destination D23 is different than D23, right? It's the filler for not the big one. D23 is like the big one which they announced this year will be um when is it? It'll be August 9th through the 11th in Anaheim. Be huge. Yes. But this was because D23 is typically every other year. They don't right. do it every year. D23 is a different event. It's an expo. There's yes. you know, there's booths, you you walk, there's an open there's a show floor. Destination D is more of a panel event. And I don't even think that there's concurrent panels. I think there's like one place and you go. And I, it's like, this I think is there what's was, at 9 a.m. I this think is there was two because they were kind of tight together. Um, okay. If I remember, the backgrounds were a little lit a little differently, but maybe they change it. Who knows? I don't know. Because then I think you get people camping out in one spot for the whole day. Then that's not, you know. But yeah, yeah. anyway. I, when I, they may have expanded it. I haven't gone to Destination D since 2011. So I think they may have grown it a little <laughs> bit since then. It, um, but I remember even when yeah. we went, I mean, when I went, it, I think that was the first one in 2011. And we sat there in the contemporary. There's a there's an expo space in the contemporary. And we were I was with two friends and we were watching it and we're watching a panel about Splash Mountain, like a 15 minute walk from Splash Mountain. And at some point we I finally said, can we just actually get out of here and go on the ride? Like I'm sitting sort of sick of like sitting in here listening to people talk about it. Let's just go on it. Because we were getting a little bit bored to tears. So it's, we didn't stay at Destination D. We we're like, well, Magic Kingdom is like tantalizingly close. Like, let's just go. <laughs> yeah, that was what I was gathering from from listening to all the panels is that it wasn't really for anything. There, it's not really to announce stuff. There was stuff announced, and we'll get into that in a second. But for the most part, it was informative, informational. Um, like the Avengers thing, the the guy it was the like the executive creative director of Marvel Comics. Okay, super passionate dude, super excitable, and he just sort of went through the timeline of the Avengers. And uh, in 1960, the Avengers were this. It started way back because of this and like just kind of spitting some facts and some trivia. And then that was it. It was done. It was like, what, what was the point of it? Right. I, I don't know. It just was weird. The um, the cruise line, the Disney cruise line panel was possibly the dumbest thing I've ever sat through. And I've been to college like it was it was just I don't know, man. Everyone was inspired. They were all talking about inspirations for stuff and how inspired these people were. And they had a panel of like six pe- people who work on the, the cruise lines talking about it. And at one point they went through each one specifically to tell their story about why they were excited to work on the cruise lines. And it's like, does anybody really care? No. I remember when I was a kid, my parents got the, the VHS tape and everyone's like, oh, you're right. Do you guys remember the VHS tape? And she's like, you know, asking the, the, the crowd and they're like, uh-huh. Yeah, man. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, and then it's like five minute story. Yeah, the- <laughs> it's like five minute story about this woman's childhood and about she watched. It's like I, I don't I don't know that I I didn't tune in for this. I don't know what I tuned in for. Um, anyway, it was just it was weird, and so I had to re- remember several times throughout the day. That's not this isn't a learning thing. It's it's a it's just a pamphlet, one sheet on the history of this whatever you're sitting in on. You're not really going to get anything that you're not going to get anywhere else. Well, but that's what it should be. And quite honestly, I, I mean, I remember when I went, we did a sk- There was a, uh, a what's the jungle cruise. It was a jungle cruise panel and it had all yeah. these former skippers and they came on and told their stories of like crazy stuff that happened. And I thought that was fascinating. Oh, that sounds awesome. It. Yeah. This was not that. <laughs> but Disney's over. Mar- everything's just marketing now. Yeah. There isn't actually interesting unique content it's all just marketing it's like come and see here's what show me how the the you know the outboard motors work or like the the azipods whatever they call on the cruise ship like show me that show me your bow thrusters how many does it have how does it you know Jeremy, i want to know easy. about the boat we're you know live I mean? we're live streaming yeah, well, come on yes. don't trust my bow let's get a little warm in here I, or, or like, you know, here's how we build it. Did you know that there's ballast? I, I just want to know more about this is a boat. Like, show me the behind the scenes. I don't care that this lady had a VHS when she was. Set. Yeah, I didn't so. care either. It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. But, uh, you know, that's that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about what actually happened at the event. And, you know, so the it started off great. The The first act was uh, it was uh, you know basically like a choir of singers. That were singing um, a Hercules song, and I forget the I forget the the name of the song. I forget what it's. I mean, I could pull out if I cared, but I don't. Um, and it was great. It was great. You know that that Hercules sort of gospel choir, um, you know, style, right? Yeah, awesome, rocking way to start. Then they had a dude come on. I forget his name too, and he sung a Hercules song. I think it was a Hercules song. Um, that was like slow. And somber, and I'm like, wow, way to just entirely suck the energy that you just pumped into the room out of the room. <laughs> it was terrible. And first of all, he was awful, and it took him half the song to warm up, and then he was fine. And then the ladies came back out, and they sung another song, and it was great. And then uh, Josh Demaro came out, and you could you couldn't really see his jeans weren't as tight as they usually are. You couldn't see the veins in his legs this time. Well, that's good. Yeah, I, and. You know, I know we'll get into more detailed stuff about this, but I do, and I hate, you know, I, <laughs> I do have an observation about Josh tomorrow. Okay. He has to stop. It, it was 91 degrees in Orlando on Saturday, and he's wearing a zip up sweater. That sweater, dude. Yeah. And I was, I have a text group with, a, with some friends, and, you know, we're all like making comments about this. And I brought that up, and I said, you know, guys, I know this probably seems really, trite like it's not something worth commenting on i was like but that but actually the sweater bothers me on a deeper level and it's that he it i think it shows his artifice it shows how fake and phony he is because everything's a put on everything's a uniform he doesn't dress for 91 degree weather he dresses because he has this paternalistic image that he you know friendly zip up sweater mr rogers image that he wants to portray yeah and Rather than be like, well, I'm in Orlando and it's 91 degrees, I should wear something weather appropriate. And that's what bought. And I'm like, God, he's just a big phony baloney. And it's just one more thing that makes him phony. Stop with the uniform. You could wear a polo. okay? there's many things that you could wear, (laughs) but he doesn't. He sticks to that no matter where he is or what he's doing. He's got that. And like, is he shopping at the all zip up sweater store? How many of these things does he even have? Like. I know you buy one, maybe two. Everybody has a shtick. So the CEO, Iger, has that uh, starch collar. His call. So Iger wasn't even there. And remember when Chapek didn't show up to one and it was all over the place. But Iger, you know, he wasn't he didn't even show up. The difference is. Yes. Chapek was scheduled to show up Ah. and canceled. To go to Iger's retirement party. That's that was right. in that big okay. CNBC article that just came out. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. So Iger uh, had his high starch collar and the suit jacket on for a video. He's at home, clearly, because it's a lot of space and a lot of warm lighting around. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, all the millions of dollars he spent on redoing that. 
Like you, you have your suit jacket on. You're doing. You're not even in front of anybody. I mean, you're doing a video, but you can't take your suit jacket off. So he always has the suit jacket, no tie, top two buttons undone. Right. Damaro has that same sweater, always, always right. zipped halfway up, three quarter zip. He's a three quarter zip boy. So that's like I don't know. There's like a there's a level where I feel like you can't go. You can't go above. That's the 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 glass ceiling for Demaro. He can't he can't do the suit jacket because Iger does it. So you got to do uh-huh. the you got to do the, the sweater. Hierarchy. He's that's, respecting that's the what hierarchy. I think it is. Yes, absolutely. I, I that's have, how you know. I have I've seen Iger do the cardigan, a button cardigan. He'll do that when he's casual. Ooh, Iger, cash Ig. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, sure. I'm looking for uh, for somebody to have clipped that speech from Iger, and I don't. I, I mean, I I streamed it. I could pull it up, but it was I don't know, man. Just same platitudes like it normally is. But uh, anyway, Josh tomorrow kicks off the celebration, the parks, uh, parks experiences and products yesterday, today and tomorrow. And he opens up by talking about what was announced last year. <laughs> he spent a good five minutes talking about last year, which is, you know, look, it's in the name yesterday. But why? Why are we talking about what you, you already know, some of which didn't even happen? Like, why? Why? But well, we're doing it. Remember when we announced Mary Poppins, <laughs> yeah. a play pavilion, a spaceship birth refurb? You guys yeah. remember that? Oh. oh, I remember. The Muppets came out. There were the Muppets were, were, were thrown about this whole thing, which I loved. Uh, so first they had Dave Golds, who does Gonzo, and he does Benson Honeydew, and he does uh, a bunch of other characters, right? And uh, that was neat because that would be one man I would love to interview. He just seems like such a nice dude. And um, then the Muppets came out. But the the technical issues abound at this company, especially at these things, especially at D23 stuff. And there are like companies who do live events. And they apparently Disney is not one of them, nor can they hire the people who do these live events to do it right. Because the director in the booth was it's like he he forgot which camera was a and which camera was b and he would literally uh make camera a hot while it's transitioning from the band to tomorrow <laughs> and then it was zooming out and then he would switch over to the to the band but the band is dark because they're not lit because they're not supposed to be on camera yet and it was just confusing it was chaos i kind of like that i like it to a certain extent and then it gets old because I just want to watch the thing because it's taking me out. Of, I'm like, I'm not focusing on it. I'm focusing on on yeah. what the heck is wrong. When, so when the Muppets come out, so there's, a, there's a high, like, wide camera where it gets the whole stage. It's sort of at like a 45 degree angle. So it's like pointing sort of down a little bit. So you see the whole entire stage floor and there's tomorrow and there's goals. And they bring out tomorrow's like, oh, we have some friends. Why don't you why don't we welcome them out or whatever? And these two Muppeteers come out, and it's like yes. Kermit and Piggy, and they're on um, Muppeteers are on these little like boards with wheels, dressed in black, you know, and they're scooting along with their feet. And I'm going, we're not supposed to see this. This isn't what we're supposed to see. So the director quick cuts to another camera, and the camera's like adjusting to kind of crop out <laughs> the, the Muppeteers right. to frame the Muppets like they normally are, and it was just. It just, it kept happening over and over and over again, and it was painful. To, I felt bad for everybody. Well, I have two things to say. One, I saw that. I caught video because, you know, I'm on Twitter. I see all the video clips coming through, and I had never, ever, ever seen the, the puppeteer operating a Muppet in yeah, my life. Ever. You, you see stills backstage of, like, Jim Henson. Yeah, and you're like, oh, wow, I can't believe that's what it looks like. Yeah. And so I saw that and I thought, why are they, I thought that was deliberate. And I, I couldn't figure out, I said, why are they room like this? They, they're such terrible stewards of the properties that they buy. Like, let's just show the Muppets with a hand up their ass. Like that make, don't do that. I thought it was that? deliberate too, until they started to correct for it. Okay. And then I said, oh, okay. I realized oh, now a screw up. it was yeah. a screw up because every time they came out, it was the camera, the live camera was reframing. And zooming in and tightening up the shot to get the people out of it. So why were the Muppets there? I'm assuming they were there to announce something. You would think that. Well, see, in any normal uh, instance, any normal event like this, you would bring out a special guest throughout the day and then announce, yeah, they're going to be back. Don't worry. You haven't seen the last of them. 
And okay. then they, they come back and, you know, Gonzo came out and, you know, all the uh, Sam Eagle came out, which was great. And uh, Dr. Deadly, uh, Uncle Deadly, Uncle Deadly came out and uh, whatever. All these Muppets, you love them, whatever. And that was that was it. Then the panel ended and I said, man, I was on a Muppet high. I'm like, you know what? We, they didn't announce anything. They were just here, which I'm OK with because I like the Muppets. And to be completely honest with you, the Muppets were the best part of, of the entire day. Because they're professionals, they what they say is very funny, and they're just good. The part of the Muppets I didn't like is that every once in a while, one of the characters would come out, and the Muppeteer's mic wouldn't be on. So <laughs> you could, you could, you only were picking him up on the other two people's lav mics, and it was just, it was just hurt him like this. It was just, yeah, just very awful. I couldn't. Yeah. I, I felt bad for everybody involved. It was almost like they. It was almost like the the director didn't get the notes on what was going to happen or he wasn't there during rehearsal or whatever. Right. And uh, they just were winging it. It was very clear yeah. and it was odd. It was odd and uncomfortable, but that's out of the way. The first announcement, Jeremy, you're, I know you're going to be excited about this. Ahsoka will become part of star tours. They're going to be filming star tour segments specifically with Ahsoka. Uh, they haven't announced what yet, but Ahsoka is of course uh, the latest star Wars TV series to be on Disney Plus. So of course. look for Star Tours to expand with Ahsoka beginning next spring in uh, Hollywood Studios, Florida, Disneyland Park, and uh, Disneyland Paris. And, okay. And then separately, you can meet and greet Ahsoka now, I think, at Star Wars Galaxy Edge at Disneyland. So a couple new characters, or one new character, some new things coming to Star Tours. Cool. Great. Yeah. Aside from Ahsoka, Asha from the new Walt Disney Animation Studios film Wish, which I don't think anybody really knows about uh, or anything about. I don't know what it's about. Will also be coming to Epcot, Disneyland Resort and Disneyland Paris. So you got two meet and greets now. That's good. It's a cool announcement, okay. I guess. We're getting stuff. What is she doing up. in Epcot? That's a great question. I don't have an okay. answer, but it's a great question. <laughs> they did show some updates and some uh, some stills from the world of Frozen. I want to back up for one second and yeah, just yeah, say, yeah. and I guess it is, it, I guess this is a fan event. So it makes sense that they would tell us this stuff, but I don't necessarily know that it's an announcement that Disney characters will be in Disney parks. <laughs> well, apparently it is. This is exactly so, what people were waiting for, I guess, or whatever. I mean, it's yeah. an announcement. It's an update. That's yeah, fine. I, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to beat them, beat them up too much about this. Cause it is like a fan event. So like, this is what I guess you would tell them, but. I don't know. It seems almost like a given. Like, oh, we're going to have popcorn there, too. <laughs> there will be oxygen <laughs> at Epcot, everybody. Yeah, but OK, <clears throat> I got it. A new yeah. character. Yeah. Well, the Frozen looks pretty cool. They were going through, you know, some of the some of the rides they're going to have. Uh, you know, there's a, are some of the things you can see within World of Frozen, which is blending Arendelle with the park's natural surrounding. And it was. um I basically just global warming the ride where it's like you can see literally there's a waterfall that you could uh, the the announcer was like you can see the the melting glacier forming into a waterfall into the rivers of Arendelle. I'm like, oh, okay, great. This is exactly all right. Yeah, that's probably not really awesome if you're into into climate change. Here's, here it is. Well, I mean, that's the story, though. I know. Right? I like, know. Melts it was the ice. So I think that makes sense. And also, yeah. yeah. So, OK, that's fine. I saw the pictures of Arendelle. It looks and, great. Or the world of Frozen. It looks really impressive. Yeah. And really well done. Yeah. Um, contrast that with I don't know if you saw um, San Francisco in the I, new. I have. New I Italy. saw a still the first still I saw today and I my stomach turned. Well, did you see how shoddy it's put together? Like there's where they they clamped on those the pieces of the bridge there's like there's like metal on it okay. but they it's like not properly aligned and there's screws missing no so it's like all slapped on yeah people were tweeting it so i i'm like oh man that really that sucks stinks that they slapped that on there but then hong kong and and paris are getting these really elaborate gorgeous lands and this was the tweet that got me in trouble War got me some attention that I had to turn off Twitter <laughs> because I retweeted the, the the Disney parks announcement showing all the photos of this new land in Hong Kong, Arendelle. And I said, 
so I, I'm something to this effect. I don't have it exactly memorized word for word, but I was like, so Hong Kong gets this full elaborate land and we got a really crummy overlay of an Epcot attraction that we all liked. <laughs> Like, what, what's the strategy here? And I don't understand. And why are you telling that you're announcing this at a Florida event where you have tons of U.S. park goers? I mean, I would assume that the percentage of people at Destination D, I'm sure they've been to Hong Kong, but I don't think that they're annual pass holders. This is a U.S. event generally, and you are wowing everyone with what you're doing around the globe. Meanwhile, it was Walt Disney World that for the last three years, kept the rest of this whole company afloat when the Hong Kong and Paris and Shanghai were closed, open, closed, open. <laughs> and then they, so we get this overlay of Maelstrom that we loved in Epcot, which makes absolutely no sense because the story, first of all, isn't even Norwegian. It's, um, it's Hans Christian Andersen, who is from Denmark. So we get that crowbarred over Maelstrom and Hong Kong gets this land? What's going on? Why couldn't Magic Kingdom get an expansion like this? Everybody, I don't ne- get well, it. Magic Kingdom is getting expansions. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, that's all. Well, okay. That's maybe. It's all maybe. This whole well, thing true. was we might do some of this. None of this was like we've greenlit this. We're building it. Here's a timeline. Here's the designs. It's like they keep, they have nothing to talk about. It's funny so that it's you. All this blue that- sky. Well, it's funny you mentioned, uh, you know, Hong Kong and why, you know, we're U.S. centric and which is, you know, absolutely true. Number one, it's, you know, it's a, it's parks around the world. You want to get people excited to go visit. Right. But there were a lot of people in the chat because I had the um, the, the D23 stream chat up on one computer and I was reading it for a little bit. And people were really excited about Disneyland Paris, like before it started, like, oh, I hope we get Disneyland Paris stuff information. So there is a there is a small, albeit small, amount of uh, people who want to hear that kind of stuff. Well, I don't know. I, that's true. Paris and Hong Kong are a different animal, though. Paris, it's almost as quick for me to get to Paris from New York as it is for me to get to L.A. I mean, at one point, I was a Paris annual pass holder. That's true. It's not yeah. that uncommon for people on the East Coast to fly six hours to Paris. It's five and a half to get to L.A. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. But how long does it take to get to Hong Kong, even from the West Coast? I think like, so it's a know, bit more removed. Know. And also yeah. Hong Kong, is, you know, it's part of China, which it's not like going to France. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, why not? Right. And then they talked a little bit about the hat box ghost. Coming to uh, Haunted Mansion in Florida in late November, there was a lot of speculation about where the hatbox ghost would be and they announced this is the announcement will be materializing in the haunted mansion as you pass the attractions endless hallway was there any feed like audible feedback about that when they said that i can't remember i don't think so i think people like applauded because they love the hatbox ghost and this whole time tomorrow's like doing the crowd work he's like right you guys right who loves the things right and everyone's like yeah, yeah cool yeah but I don't know. I, I, I hate it when people do that because, number one, it means you don't have anything to say. It's just you're filling time. Come on, give it up for the band. Like, okay, whatever. Everyone says. Um, did but, anyone, did he say at any point, sorry, I have to, sorry to interrupt you. Did at any point, did he say, how's everyone doing and get a tepid response and then go, I can't hear you. I don't think so. That's the but, worst thing in the world. But someone else did, did something similar. Where it's like, how's everybody doing? Like, yeah, like, yo, what? Or whatever, something. Along you guys can do better that. than that. Something like that. It's so, I hate it so much. But <laughs> it's, yeah, it just, it's awkward. And it slows the whole thing down. I'm here and I don't want just, don't give me bullet points, I guess. You can be creative and be, you know, whatever. But the whole thing of like, oh, yeah, right. You guys like this land. Sure. Right. You know, it's like if, if you're not comfortable doing it, then don't do it. I don't know. Anyway, Hatbox Ghost, Endless Hallway. And someone said in the chat, I forget which chat it was, but it was like that sort of messes with the timeline of Constance or whatever, because it was supposedly like after she killed uh, her husband, then all the ghosts came or something like that. But the hat box, I don't know, some weird thing. I don't know. Yeah, it was odd. Then over in uh, DCA, a new world jumping vehicle is coming to the next attraction in Avengers Campus to help transport superheroes into the multiverse. Brent Strong, who was the executive creative director at Walt Disney Imagineering, 
shared an early peek at the ride vehicle featuring a design that combines elements of Tony Stark's time suits with Xandaran jump points and Wakandan technology, uh, which I'm sure means all the world to you. Something you're very passionate <laughs> yeah. about. You're very Wakandan technology kind of a guy. You got your degree in that. Um, and then that was it. And then it says more details on this high tech vehicle that will then travel to new worlds are coming in the future. So the uh, sharing the design was just, you know, um, concept art. One image sort of looks like uh, Tony, Tony Stark Iron Man suit. That's it. But we're getting a new ride in DCA. Well, that's needed, though, because isn't Avengers Campus like very one small. ride? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's very, very small. So that's good. You guys need a little yeah. injection. Yeah, it was fine. It was like, OK, there you go. Cool, man. This is um, I, I don't think I like this announcement, Jeremy. At Walt Disney World. The Country Bear Jamboree is getting new songs, and the Bears will be performing a new act in 2024. I'm sure you've right. heard this. Yes. Disney Imagineer Chris Beatty was on stage with Josh tomorrow, and he said when the show debuts, the Bears will be reinterpreting favorite Disney songs in different genres of country music. Imagineers are envisioning the new experience as an homage to the classic musical reviews in Nashville, and they're working with Nashville musicians to get the authentic country sound the country bear jamboree will still have the fun and friendly tone fans enjoy the same famous characters like trixie big al and the other what do you feel about this? i have opinions but i want to hear from you well i'm glad that the country bears is staying that's the way i that's so, what i took away from it also trying to find a positive note in there i'm glad yeah, it's I, staying. I, I like that attraction i think that attraction is very fun yeah i so, so the same what I've been able to uncover is that the same work in their Disney working group that decided that Splash Mountain was offensive, set their sights on country bears and said, mm. there are things that are there that are inappropriate. For example, one of the songs is titled blood on the saddle. Uh, I don't know, why, <laughs> but it's a little strange. They do talk about shooting the one kid, you know, uh, if he please don't mama, don't shoot little Buford. Yeah. <laughs> I think those are fun. Or mean, maybe I'll shoot him instead or something. You're not wrong. But, I think those are too so, lighthearted to take seriously, though. Well, I love it. I, yeah. I I don't think it should go anywhere. I think right. it's fantastic. Um, And you know what? I, I saw it as a kid. I didn't grow up. I never shot anyone. It didn't really affect me. I was able to sort of to separate properly. that in my <laughs> head. Yes. Um, yeah. But uh, so I am happy. I what I heard, though, that sort of annoyed me is they're going to do interpretations of Disney songs. It's like, why don't you just announce that you have completely you don't have any more ideas? Harmonious is going to be Disney songs interpreted throughout the world. The, that's all they've got. They've got they they're not doing anything creative. The thing about Country Bears is it was sort of a love letter to country music and bluegrass. And I feel like. I guess it still could be that I'm just a little disappointed that I don't know, I like that you could find all of those songs actually out there in the real world and it was them playing them. Sometimes it's nice to get a break from a whole new world. Like, yeah. I don't need to see it on every ride. And in every hotel room and in every restaurant I eat at, because then it's walking just around. Ubiquitous. Yeah. Yeah. That was so my sometimes. take, too. I was happy that they uh, that they're keeping the ride because there was that big kerfuffle about like, oh, they're, they're going to get rid of it. Remember when that one yeah. website was saying, oh, it's convinced, confirmed they're getting rid of it. No, yeah, they're not. getting rid of it. I loved that ride. We went on that probably more times than any uh, other ride, except the people mover when we were in Disney World. And it was great. And the 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 covers of like you know, of, of country songs. It was great. It was done really well, but I didn't like it. So they played a little clip, uh, a little video that the little, little package that they produced of uh, the Nashville musicians recording the songs and the song that they were doing was uh, bare necessities. And I just, my eyes rolled out of my head. It's like, th th and so I had the same, same exact response as you. The music sounds great. It's a fun song to play that, you know, it's like kind of that, that thumping walking baseline or whatever. And but why why is it why does it have to be a Disney song? We hear that song walking around the parks, hear it like you said in the hotel rooms. We hear it in movies. We hear it all over the place. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it anymore. It's it's very much a palate cleanser. Country Bears 
was was sort of a, ref- a refresher come back not everything has to be existing disney owned ip i didn't i didn't like that there i so there's um on that i think that disney doesn't they have this idea that disney songs are only disney songs from their movies and that's what frustrates me is universe of energy to me is a disney song illuminations reflections of earth is a disney song but you have people who come in from outside and they're like well that's not a disney song it's like no the fat epcot and all of that stuff that was never in a disney movie is still the essence of disney it's so it's so not disney that it is disney (laughs) and that's what like bothers me is like when i hear blood on the saddle not that i hear it very often in my (laughs) day-to-day life but if it were ever to come on anywhere yeah because it is a real song that's out there yeah i would think of disney any song that's in that same like with the the um the music that's in the tiki room all of that's Mm. taken from real world but i associate it with disney disney so iconic it's like fireworks fireworks aren't invented by disney or owned by disney but disney has used them so much and so well throughout history that fireworks are almost a brand element of disney even though they've been around for way longer than disney yeah. Um. Another. There is a positive side to this getting the country bears getting some love, even though we may not like the musical direction of it. Is that what I understand? Is that the animatronics that are in the country bear jamboree are very old. I think they're mm. original to the park, so they're hydraulic based, and they're very expensive to maintain. And so we were almost left with a choice of get rid of it because it's expensive to maintain. What they're doing is they're getting all new animatronics that use the modern servo motors. Right. Okay. Which are more realistic, but also much easier for Disney to maintain and less costly. So this investment almost secures the country bears Mm. for a long time going forward. True. I read this from someone on, um, excuse me, from someone on Twitter. So there's a, there is a benefit to it. The fact that they're making that investment in modern and that's reprogrammable so it might be that perhaps we'll have this show for a while and then it might get updated and change so i think that there's the investment could lay a foundation for a long future for the country bears i hope so i really do i hope so however i wonder what the draw for country bears is going to be do you want to go in and see rehashes of disney songs i don't know maybe Maybe most people do. Who who knows? I don't necessarily. So when we go back to Disney World, if we ever go back, I would probably go like one time. And be like, okay, I saw it because I had. I don't know. It's well, sort of like the Hall of Presidents, where like the content isn't really great, but the the atmosphere is awesome, and so I'll just do that. I guess. Well, hopefully, you know, there was still a lot of really funny banter. True between the bears there was there yes. was i hope it's literally not just singing a whole new world hopefully there's <laughs> there's a comic element to it I'm because sure there will be. i mean i would bust out laughing out loud in the country bears because the jokes are like they're funny to me it was yeah. like a slapstick kind of thing so i found it really entertaining apart from the music so hopefully they can continue to keep that element of it even if the music isn't exactly what i want to hear fair enough Speaking of new elements, I think this is coming to Magic Kingdom in Florida to Adventureland. It's a new Pirates of the Caribbean themed lounge. The first of its kind experience will extend the story of Pirates of the Caribbean. Imagineers are in the design process now and more details are coming in the future. Yeah, so this isn't greenlit. No. Well, it's not greenlit. It's I, I mean, they're not done planning it, it sounds like. But this is what they're doing. Yeah, I don't know. It's It's in that weird... Hey, we're doing yeah. it. There's one piece of concept art they showed, um, and it's you know it's pirates in a bar. It's not really exciting. But I'm like, what is they, like, what does they, that mean? Like, why share this and not ex- not not have any? You gave me the first layer, pirate Caribbean, a lounge. Okay, will there be characters in there? Uh, will it be food and drink? Like it, at one point, it, I wasn't even sure if guests were be able to go inside. If it was just a thing that you saw, like a diorama or a it's walk, a diorama. I don't know. I, I had no idea. I was like, okay, you're not saying anything. So they gave, they give you the surface area thing, and that's it. It's like, why don't you? Can I can I hear something else? Just yeah. something like one. Give me a level, because I'm not excited about a, a themed lounge because I don't know what that means. It doesn't mean anything. To me. Right. I mean, I'm hoping that it's analogous to the Skipper Canteen, where you go in. And skippers wait on you and do their sort of jokes from the 
Oh God. Jungle Cruise boat. I would not. I will never go there. You're so, why? It's so great. It's so I funny. It. I hate the jokes. I hate, that's the, that's the thing I hate about Jungle Cruise is the joke. Cause they're not funny. I love it. I don't like it. Some people, some people take it for granted, but I love it. Don't give me that. <laughs> I, it, it's also got fantastic <laughs> area music. Yeah, whatever. Um, I so I think it's on. really, I think it's a really great, like I could, well, I could eat in Pecos Bill and just be in a room or I could eat in here and have some theming. I think it'd be cool. They, okay. they all get drunk. If you can go in there, look, they're trying to get more places to serve alcohol. I'm sure this is going to be a place where you serve alcohol. Pirates don't go in and order Kool-Aid. So I'm hoping that maybe, maybe do. uh, I don't know. It could be cool. It's probably gonna okay. be impossible to get in. It's going to be like Ogas and you're like, here's your 45 minutes are up. Are you done eating those root chips? We disguised as your bits. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, more Epcot news, Jeremy, and then maybe we'll take a break. I don't know. We'll see. Um, at Epcot, the World Celebration neighborhood will begin welcoming guests this December. World Celebration will unite the front of the park, tying together the other two new Epcot neighborhoods, World Discovery and World Nature. This completion of the last of the park's four neighborhoods will be the latest major milestone multi-year transformation of Epcot. Our earlier road to Destination D23 story has details on the new experiences coming to the new land, including a new attraction, special entertainment merchandise, as well as a zootopia fied food and beverage items from Zootopia. So, uh, what do you, what world celebration neighborhood opening soon? And it's tying everything together. It's like the rug and, and Big Lebowski. It ties the room together. Are you excited about this? Well, Am I excited to see it? No, I'm excited for these walls to come down. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. It's like, <sighs> Mr. Demaro, come on. It's been up for almost as long. They started this in 2019. Do you know what that's going to be? Here's what's going to be in there when they, when the big reveal. Mm-hmm. A new, one new building where it's going to be an event space, a statue of Walt and trees. That's what's there. <laughs> so yeah am i excited to go in there no i i you know what there was there was a a, a a gal i forget her name she was up there um i think she was on the imaginary panel or whatever and she was like talking about this specific space and you know because tomorrow brought people out to talk about it and she was literally talking about how when you get off like the monorail or you go into uh to epcot it's just it's a big open space so what they wanted to do is break that up a little bit with flower pots planters mm-hmm. so you have to go in and kind of separate and it forces you to take in the space look around and whatever and i'm like no it doesn't it's annoying that you have to maneuver around this stuff like the things that these design elements that they think do a thing don't do anything it's not like i'm not going to be like oh we got to get in here oh my god there's a there's a pot here hold on i gotta i gotta walk around it. oh my goodness now that i've slowed down i can really take in the space you're gonna yeah. you're gonna look around and enjoy it anyways because you paid a lot of money to be here. I I don't I don't I don't need this. I need shade. Yeah, I mean it's a shame. We used to walk in and see a, an expansive fountain that was synced to music. That would have been so and now, cool, dude. Yeah, that's gone. They right. do, they tore it out and they took five years to replace it with flower pots and a statue of Walt. Great. Am I excited about it? I'm excited for the walls to go away. I'm excited. I'm excited not to have to take a detour around the entire central core of the park to get to World Showcase so I can get a beer. Beyond that, I'm more lamenting it. I think it's a huge shame. You should also, want to be done. they tore down half. It used to be a symmetrical. You had two buildings that like formed like half like C's, Communicore. Right. And then the center was the fountain. They, they knocked one down. Then they realized that was stupid. And they're now building a quarter of one back. So now we have one C and like a comma and then Moana journey of water in the other part. So they've ruined the sy- symmetry of the park. Yeah. And by the way, the other building that didn't get knocked down but got completely gutted is spectacular. It's gorgeous. It's where the new gift shop is and the new um, quick service. But it's beautiful. It's got they, they, they made it with like high floor to ceiling windows. Light comes through. All they had to do was renovate the other side, too. I don't understand what this knocking down was and now rebuilding part that they didn't originally plan. Yeah. And so it's just we've been waiting five years and we're getting sort of like a patched back together kind of 
Same. attempt at bringing what it was when all they had to do is nothing. So I and saw I'm glad it's over. I'm just glad it's over. They shared um, some concept art of like the um, the gift shop right there at the entrance. And, you know, it has elements of like older Epcot and people in the chat are like, oh, that looks really cool. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's cool. But it's sort of like when a bad movie shows a clip of a good movie within their movie, like a character's watching a good movie. And you're like, why are they doing that? Because you never show you never show a better movie in your movie. You don't do that. Come on now. Yes. Um, speaking of Journey of Water, that opens on October 16th. And apparently everybody at the panel um, got to go on a an exclusive like premiere of it. So that's fun. Or everyone who, who, went, who showed up at the panel. Uh, Journey of Water is the new walkthrough experience, uh, blah, blah, blah. Also, on October 16th, Moana will arrive in world nature and make her first appearance in her own dedicated space near the Journey of Water. So that's the third character meet and greet that they've announced on this panel. And that's great. Good for them, everybody. Why not? <laughs> uh, we're sticking with Epcot here. Test Track will be reimagined. Yes. Imagineers, along with teams from Chevrolet, are reaching back into history for inspiration. From the original world of motion and bringing that spirit of optimism to the next iteration of the test track attraction. More to come in the future. Of course. So there's not. That's it. You don't get anything else. Yeah, we don't know much. It's hard to formulate an opinion. And here's the thing. On the one hand, I'm very optimistic and excited to hear that they would look back to the original attraction world of motion for inspiration for the new version of this. However. Disney loves to use buzzwords that they think I'll like in <laughs> order to get me you. on board with things. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So they throw figment at us. They put figment. Oh, let's do a figment popcorn bucket. They don't invest in the figment attraction. I, that thing is on la- its last legs. I have a figment but they, thing to talk about, too. They all know we love figment. So yeah. they just throw him at us and they just mention it. They always use they always try to evoke Walt's words to to justify what they've done to Epcot. So I'm always I like it if it's true. I'm I'm skeptical of how far they'll take that. Having said that, General Motors is the original sponsor of that attraction and they're still there. And that's the only first of all, that's the only reason why this is getting any money, because when they announced the Epcot overhaul, there was no mention of Test Track. Test Track is a relatively new attraction or new version of its attraction so everyone's kind of surprised because this is like the third version and on top of world of motion and there were things that they announced that they never did like spaceship earth but spaceship earth doesn't have a sponsor uk pavilion doesn't have a sponsor play pavilion doesn't have a sponsor so they all got the axe and suddenly we're getting a new test track where's that from (laughs) it was never part of it and in fact bob Iger even said he was like when this thing the center's done world moana in the center he's like we're done with the epcot overhaul anything you thought we were getting it's over and now they're like test track because (laughs) gm's sponsorship is up and gm is is, must be footing the bill for a new attraction sure so it works and and that's fine you know because disney has no money there all right, I'm not even going to get into it. Fine. They're going to pay for it. My belief now is that there are no one left at Disney has any institutional knowledge or pride in what the con- company ever stood for or meant, particularly Epcot. My hope is that there are other people in other companies like GM that will force Disney's hand to make something that is a true vision of the future and m- more Epcot focused. Maybe that'll happen. I Agreed. don't know. If I worked at GM, I would be like, here's what you're getting tomorrow. You're getting World of Motion 2.0, and that's what we're paying for. And now, and you can just, you know, get out lost with anything else. Uh, <laughs> on that note, we're going to take a quick break, everyone. We're going to come back. We're going we're gonna to finish up with uh, all of the parks and uh, experiences announcements and to uh, dig in a little bit of uh, other news. So hang on, everyone. It's in-depth. We'll be right back. in-depth reporting disney news that's probably not made up all right thanks for hanging around everybody we're sticking with epcot here jer for our announcements a new nighttime spectacular called luminous the symphony of us will debut on december 5th 2023 jeff volley president of walt disney world is with josh on stage to announce the brand new show that'll feature fireworks fountains lasers lighting effects and music and i will say I saw this part, of course, of the uh, announcements or whatever, and they this, this man came out. They didn't say who he was. I had no idea who he was, 
until reading the the recap on D23 website. There was no lower thirds to explain who these people were. Oh, that's weird. You had no idea. No idea who anybody was if they didn't hear them say their name. But yeah, anyway, so there you go. Uh, Luminous Symphony of Us. You'll have to report in and let me know if it's any good. This was the way, This was the announcement I've been waiting for. Really? I've been on the edge of my seat okay. for this. Because you know that my whole entire life revolved around Illumination's reflections of Earth for years and years and years. And so now we have this new... Fi- and then then they tortured me with Epcot Forever, which is like, now I like it because it, I just realized how much worse it can get. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess I like it now, <laughs> even though I hated it. But I've seen... Oh, then, I, then, then they shoved Harmonious down my throat, and I was like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Now, Luminous, they come out with. I know that the I've seen pictures of the new barges. They're much smaller. The, the infrastructure for this will not be the eyesores. And it looks like at, from, the, from the aerial footage I've seen, these new barges have two outboard motors on the back of each one, Ooh. which tells me that they are meant to move and not be there all day. Praise, so they're gonna praise JPEG for that design. Yeah. Thank you, JPEG, for that. Yes. Now, I have heard mixed things. There's one where Disney did not specifically say that this will be Disney music. They said lasers, lights, fires, blah, blah, blah and music. Okay, that makes me hopeful that this might be an original score, something along the lines of Illuminations, written by the genius Gavin Greenaway. I would love that. I don't think we're going to get that because they just can't seem to come up with anything better. And so I think it's going to be Disney music. Now, here's what I am hanging my hat on. The subtitle of Luminous. First of all, let's talk about this title, okay? You were so close. You could have just called it Illumination, okay? <laughs> but they, I swear, they did this They did this to me. They were like, let's just go almost there and call it Lumen, and then we're going to stick on the end of Harmonious, because we can't get over this whole us, us, the symphony of us, Luminous, Harmonious. Stop putting it on my shoulders. Right. I am not the magic. I am not the story. I want to go and be told a story or see an experience. I'm sick of this being about me. I were the <laughs> yeah. magic. I don't need to pay all this money for you. Stop making it about me. For once, it's not all about me. Can it not be? Except obviously <laughs> it's all about me because they named it just to annoy me. Yeah. So, so Luminous. Okay, so they, they're annoying me with the name. Fine. It's close enough to Illuminations. Yeah. <laughs> just call it Illuminations, you idiot. So anyway, the subtitle, though, is called The Symphony of Us. Now, that's interesting, and I'm hanging my hat on that word symphony, because one of the criticisms that I had of Harmonious, there were many, the lack of a story, the horrible infrastructure, it was a calamity, the pyro suck. I mean, you can't, there's so many criticisms of Harmonious, like I can't, its ending was just basically a crash, so fine. But one of the things that I think could have been a band-aid to make that show drastically better would to be just have it be instrumental. If you got rid of the vocals, that show jumps in terms of how good it is. But like the vocals were just so awful. And the few moments where there weren't vocals was when I really did find myself enjoying the show. They were few and far between. So my hope is that Disney recognizes this also and has decided to call it symphony because it's a symphony and that it won't be drowning in vocals. If this is Disney music just interpreted with exotic instruments from around the world, it, using an orchestra, and we get to hear all the different ways these songs could be played, fantastic. I'll take it, and I'll go home, and I'll <laughs> shut up. Okay? But if this is more of these oh, oh, vocals, I can't do it, and I'm out. You're out, yeah. I don't blame you, man. So that's my thoughts on Luminous. You know, December 5th is coming. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. Are you going to be the there room. on the night? Are you going to be there opening night? N- no, I'm, I'll be on a work trip that, oh, that man. week. I will be in, in London. Be monitoring X, though. Oh, I will be monitoring X. For sure. And Twitter. Jeremy, I know you've been dying for this one as well. Disney Adventure is the name of Disney Cruise Line's newest ship. Isn't that exciting? And I basically called it, like, on the stream. They were like, we have the wish. We have the thing. Can anyone? I think it was like, can you guess what the new one is? And I'm like, it's gonna be, it's gonna be something like magic. And I don't know if I said adventure, but in my mind, I almost said, I almost said adventure. And I was like, no, I don't want to be too negative. Adventure. It's adventure. Of course, of course, it is. Why wouldn't it be? These are the buzzwords. In it's ten the years, only- there's gonna be another one. It's gonna be illumination. 
well, they're not going to be able to build any more cruise ships because when they hit adventure, that's the, that's it. They don't have any other words. Oh, well, d- yeah, yeah, you might say that. Disney Adventure is the seventh ship in the Disney Cruise Line fleet and work is currently underway in Germany. It will be the first Disney ship to sail from Singapore and throughout Southeast Asia. So, you know, you have to fly to go get it and feature the Disney service, storytelling, and entertainment everyone knows and loves, blah, blah. Thomas Malzome, president of Disney's Signature Experiences, is joining Josh on stage to share updates on Disney Cruise Line as it appears, as it prepares for a period of growth unlike anything ever experienced before. Right now, Jeremy, there are three brand new ships in development along with Disney Lookout K at Lighthouse or Key at Lighthouse Point, a brand new island destination. Disney teams are collaborating with talented artists and cultural advisors in the Bahamas to shape an experience that celebrates the natural beauty, traditions, and artistry of the one-of-a-kind nation. So we're having three brand new ships coming. So this Disney Adventure is the ship that wasn't planned for. It's the one that they bought as like a closeout. Yeah, and so they were talking about it, how it was inspired by this and designed for this. And I think it was RGH in our chat was like, wasn't this the one that they had to pick up on <laughs> because it was canceled? It wasn't designed for anything. But, you know, what they showed was cool. And I always love shipbuilding videos when they, they are putting the pieces together. Yes. Because they build them in sections and they stick them together. They like and stick they, them together. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what happens if they don't meet up? They, I don't know. It just that would freak me out. But. So that was part was, you know, fun of the of the of the panel. But, you know, well, I think that's great. You know, I great. Think great Disney too. Cruise, I think a Disney cruise is great. The problem is these ships are so big. They're too big. I that. Yeah. The 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 size bothers me. You're taking an elevator on your Disney on your cruise ship. I don't like that. I think that's weird. I don't. I, it's on something something highly unnatural about that. Yeah. The, a super cruise ship. You know, the, the first four Disney cruise ships, the first two are actually not now when you look at them, they look positively minuscule yeah then the second two but these are so big and i just i I don't want to be hauled around i mean it's all you're already kind of just being like hauled around like cattle but now with this it's just like here we go (laughs) it's moving i don't know it just feels a little too much uh, yeah it's too big i agree too big um, a new look at what's coming to Fantasy Springs at Tokyo Disney was uh, re- revealed. The eighth themed port of Tokyo Disney Sea will feature Rapunzel's Forest, Peter Pan's Neverland, and Frozen, all inspired by, of course, the the movies or whatever. Fantasy Springs is scheduled to open in 2024. So there you go, Fantasy Springs Tokyo Disney Resort. Bruce Vaughn, sh- uh, Chief Creative Officer at Walt Disney Imagineering, joins Josh on stage for a special blue sky look at what's possible. When dreaming big at the Disney parks, this is like what we had last year with like, could do a land of all villains, could do all of this. You just never know with us. We're crazy. We're like the Joker. We're, we're insane. Uh, future expansion plans for Magic Kingdom in Florida are the largest ever for the park. According to Bruce, Imagineers are looking to tell stories beyond Big Thunder Mountain, similar in scale to things like Star Wars Galaxy Edge and Pandora the World of Avatar, adding new attractions, restaurants, shows, and more. To me, this seems like the mo- probably the most boring thing that you could do. I mean, Big Thunder Mountain, I mean, it's fine. I, I don't know. I just I don't see it as the backdrop for a story involving a new land like Galaxy's Edge. Like on that scale or, or Pandora. I just I don't see it. It's already part of the land. It's called Adventureland. OK, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh, sorry, no. uh, Frontierland, rather. Yeah, Frontierland, um, because, yeah, it's been the thing, right? I don't uh, I don't know. I think that uh, they are they don't have enough to announce. They feel they the problem is they've set this up as an announcement thing and they, they've trained the Disney yes. the people to expect announcements. Right. And when they don't have things to announce, they have to like sort of lean back on this rather than say we're going to make a couple of announcements and um then we're going to give you a lot of great info. They also didn't used to do these panels where they just made announcements they used to sprinkle them in so for example um i was talking earlier about the what's it called the jungle cruise panel yeah right and in the jungle cruise panel they announced they made some announcement about the jungle cruise i can't remember what it was so long ago but they worked it in it wasn't like you went to there to hear news you went there to hear the stories and they were like by the way jungle cruise is getting 
a new story or a new joke or like something like that. So yeah. the no, the the news was a new joke that would be news. Out. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's almost like the the parks panel announcement. It's not even a panel. It's just Josh talking. It's almost like that sort of took the steam out of everything else. I mean, because they had a specific Disney Cruise panel that the announcements of the advent, uh, adventure should have been in there. Would think because yes. or else why would you tune in? I tuned in because I assumed we were going to get announcements, but we we didn't. So the whole thing. I learned my lesson with with uh, Destination D twenty three. Anyway, well, and I have to ask. You know, we talked about. Um, Sorry, we, we can get back onto it, but we've talked about, you know, how park attendance has maybe been a bit lackluster over the past six months. And I have to wonder, is attendance these going to start to suffer? Because number one, you can live stream it from home for so, free. Some of it. Yeah. Yeah. Not all of it. But yes, you're right. And two, you go and all the announcements are kind of lackluster at best. So it's like, why did I fly? Why did I pay money and fly here for this? To be kind of annoyed. I've never well, found these expos or events to be particularly compelling, and it seems like they've only gotten worse. They have gotten worse. They aren't compelling. I will say, um, everyone who attended that parks panel got a hundred dollar Disney gift card. And another thing, like there was a I think it was the Avengers panel or whatever. They were pushing a, a Hasbro toy. It was like a two foot toy. It looked awesome um, for 200 bucks. And like everyone got something. They were really giving stuff away. So that's cool. But every time they pan to the audience, just you have these, you know, boomers, like literally boomers holding their phones up, just recording the whole thing from like the front row, just like this. Look at their phone yeah. the whole time. And then now you can go on YouTube and you can see all the footage and it's all bad. And, you know, but it's all these Disney bloggers thinking that they know what they're doing. Right. A new show based on Zootopia is being created for the Tree of Life Theater at Disney's Animal Kingdom. The current concept for the new Zootopia experience has guests visiting the different biomes you only glimpse in the film, traveling along with Judy Hopps, Nick Wilde, and other characters. Imagineers are currently finalizing the concept, and more details will be coming in the future, which is just the running joke of this whole thing. <laughs> but it's going to be a projection-based thing at the Tree of Life Theater about Zootopia. Not not a land, not a ride, not anything projection. So there. Well, you go. it's a that. theater. So oh, of course okay. it's a well, projection. It's a three D show. It's the same. It's a. Bu- it's currently know. a Bugs Life. It's what a, do I know? What do I well, know? Haven't you ever? You used to have it at California Adventure. The same ride. It was a three D movie. Oh yeah, no, that and, like, was cool. The, I just, the wasps would I, poke you in the back, and like, no, that was what, great. I didn't know that that was for me. The Tree of Life is like the. The Tree of Life, I thought it was a projection on that, and you stand there and watch it. I didn't the know. Tree of Life has an inside, and it's a theater. See, I didn't know this, and they didn't friggin' say that. They don't <laughs> specify in the thing. So I don't know. I'm going, oh, well, that's why I'm telling you. It's in the theater. So they're, they're, so it's tough to be a bug goes away. <clears throat> or right. Flick, he can't catch a break. Every part, every time Imagineering looks at Flick, they're like, remember you that, are on limited time, buddy. Remember that lady who wrote in several years ago? Seeing if she can come on and talk about her uh, her petition to have Flick um, character meet and greet in a specific place or whatever. I bet she's throwing a fit by now. Oh, she cannot be happy. Okay, just in new experiences inspired by Encanto and the fan favorite adventurer Indiana Jones are both being considered for the reimagined land at Disney's Animal Kingdom. While Disney Imagineering is planning to reimagine Dino Land USA into a new land inspired by a region sometimes referred to as Tropical Americas. I don't know why. It just sounded like a Trump quote. Um, this region sometimes referred to as a Tropical America. <laughs> as part of the research, Imagineers are looking at some of the most biodiverse areas on the planet in the regions just north and south of the equator here in the Western Hemisphere, the northern part of South America stretching up into Central America. So, I mean, okay, makes sense. I don't like Indiana Jones being in sniffing distance of Encanto. That to, just doesn't doesn't meet, doesn't feel right. But they both take place in that area, kind of. So it's fine, I guess. But um, what the hell does yeah. Indiana Jones have to do with the conservation message of Animal Kingdom? I don't get this. I mean, Encanto has nothing, has no message either, other than like. Other than wow. not, don't be a grandmother who is a jerk and stick up to you, <laughs> stand up to your older generations when they tell you no. 
That's, that's the it. New, that's um, the message. <laughs> is that really the message of Encanto? No, the message of Encanto is probably like family or whatever. But it was basically the message is everyone has magical powers, but the grandmother doesn't want everybody to be who they are. So she locks that down and makes everybody do what they want. So like Isabella is the popular one, but she doesn't like it. And the other one is really strong, but she doesn't really like it because she doesn't want to be the strong one. She wants to, you know, be cared for, too. She has feelings, right? So Mirabelle, who's the main character, basically finds this out by going to each one to talk about Bruno. And it's the whole thing is just dumb. And then so Mirabelle doesn't have any powers, but then her power is bringing the family together. So at the end of the, at the, end of the movie, spoiler alert, the grandma's like, hey, sorry for being kind of a, a jerk to everybody. You can all be who you want. And then everyone's happy. So really, the villain is the grandmother. Sounds like a perfect movie. fit for Disney's Animal Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? The only animal thing that has to do with anything is like the the, the mice that Bruno has, and then the, the little boy can talk to jungle animals. That's it. There's nothing animals about it. It's pretty dumb. Um, and then Indiana Jones is literally just a colonizer, right? He goes in actively into the, the opening scene of Indiana Jones. Uh, the first one, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, is him stealing an idol that is actively being worshipped by tribes and protected by these tribes people. And he's like, it, be- you know, talking about stuff belonging in a museum. And it's like, no, it belongs where it is. <laughs> stop, stop looting ancient civilizations, dog. What are you doing? But anyway, that's, I've never seen it. I don't know. It's so good. You should watch some of these classic movies, man. You might actually enjoy something. I've seen parts of Indiana, to be fair. I don't understand why this is going to Animal Kingdom. What are they doing? Only Disney. Someone said this on Twitter. Leave it to Disney to not be able to be successful selling dinosaurs (laughs) to children. (laughs) It's like dinosaurs are like one of the most popular things amongst kids. Look at Jurassic Park and that series and world. Disney somehow flubbed it and can't figure out how to sell dinosaurs in an animal park. It's so ridiculous. There are so many creative and unique things they could do. And now instead, they're going to take what is a great ride, which is Dinosaur, and they're going to duplicate something that already exists in Disneyland that is totally thematically off for this park. And I'm really annoyed by it. And everyone's like, oh, it's okay." I'm like, you know, the thing's constantly broken down. Have you ever been to Disneyland? Any of you dopes? It's never open. The ride's constantly down. You're going to you want that? Great. Have fun. I'm so annoyed by this. This actually. And the thing is, like, I have been upset for the last five years because (laughs) these Imagineers have torn apart Epcot. And my last refuge of good theming was Animal Kingdom. And it was the last thing that was like, you know what? I can still go here and it's great and it's so well done. And now they've all set their sights on this and they're going to shit all over this too. Well, you know what, Jeremy? Let's round up. Let's end the last announcement from the Parks panel with something that should bring a tear to your eye, tear of joy and a smile to your otherwise, you know, jack-o'-lantern face (laughs) figment (laughs) you can now meet and greet figment figment is now a character walking around um which actually was really cute so during they were talking about the the disney adventure and uh they picked a winner from the audience to win a trip for like her and three other people the winner and three other people or whatever to go on i think it was even the disney adventure to be honest with you and it was this lady uh she she gets up she's like cosplaying as like figment or whatever so it's really cute. It was like nice. And she was very over the overwhelmed. And it was, you know, it was nice. It was a nice moment. So there was that. Have you seen the character of Figment? Have you seen this character? <clears throat> the, the, the meet and greet. In the greet. ride? Sure. No, the meet and greet character. Oh, yeah. I've seen that too. Uh, I would like to share the screen with you. I mean, oh, I literally, if you go back on my stream, I literally burst out laughing when this thing, <laughs> this abomination came out. <laughs> Because, first of all, look at these eyes. Look at these well, spooky eyes of Damaro. Just he's like, dead right. inside, doll eyes. This lady, <laughs> this lady over here just looks freaked out to all hell. <laughs> but <laughs> Figment looks... I mean, the, char- the, the person's head is here. You can see it bulging out of, <laughs> out of the, the upper yeah. torso. And this when, costume. Yeah, and when this thing walks around, the head flops. It's terrible. The torso is completely out of proportion to the rest of this thing's body. It's disgusting. It's embarrassing. And I hate it. I absolutely loathe it. It is when you order a, um, a figment costume on Wish. This is what you get. It, it makes no sense. It looks counterfeit. It looks 
I don't like it. It's terrible. They they did an awful job at this. This is exactly right. Thank it you. does look counterfeit. There's in New York, it's sort of famous that when you go to Times Square, there's people like in like counterfeit Mickey and Minnie costumes walking yeah. around and you can like pay them to like take a picture that, with you, but you never would because they look like child molesters. Yeah. And then we like, have that in Hollywood and, too, where it's like okay. they get aggressive if you don't tip. And the tip is yeah, five like, bucks. This looks nothing like Mickey Mouse. Like, are you kidding? It just looks like a rat. Yeah, and like, and you sleep in this later, costume. You always clearly. see them. You always see the guy like smoking with it on, with the head under his arm. Like, and he's like counting ones. Oh, sure. Like, what is happening? Yeah. So that's what this is. This looks like those. It has the quality level of those. It doesn't look like figment. Figment's actually supposed to be pretty rotund. This looks like a, a figment that's done on a diet. It's look, it looks like it was filmed in 16 9 ratio. And then stretched and cropped to fit four three, where it's like you know uh, all you movie heads know what I'm talking about. It's like letterbox version, but then you watch it on TV and it's like they just take the sides, crop it, and stretch it up to fit to remove the black bars. Horrendous, horrendous. How how in the world is Josh tomorrow in Florida in a zip up sweater on stage all day and in a gray sweater no less, and I don't see one pit stain. It, I don't get it. I would be so, like the pit stains would be down to my hips. Well, it's probably very cool in there. You know, the, the other fashion yeah, thing I saw there, what a lot of people were doing is uh, like this man. Uh, so this is the guy who I said was introduced to nobody knew what he was. Jeff Bale or whatever. Yeah. A lot of jeans and a blazer and a T-shirt underneath. That was like yes. the, the work casual for this event. Everybody. Yes. I noticed Bruce Everybody. Vaughn had that too. Yeah. And it's like, well, can we, can we, can we not do this? I don't know why it didn't bother me. But anyway, there you go. Figment. I'm sure I, please, next time you go, I really want you to go get a, a picture next to Figment, please. And I will, I'm going to frame it. I'm going to put it up here. I'm not studio. doing that. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, by the time I go back down there, <laughs> the line will be five minutes, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I am not doing that. But um, it's funny because when they announced this, my friend texts me and she goes, yeah. it's gone. She was like, she goes, oh, God, tomorrow, all of Twitter is just going to be flooded with people with uh, that three hour line filled with all those mutants. She was describing all the people at Destination D as mute. <laughs> and I was like, I like, I fell off my chair laughing so hard because I just like didn't, I never thought of them as, I would never call them mutants. No. They're not mutated. But like, I just, she just like couldn't think of another word to call these adults that, and like a, like a prophecy, like Nostradamus, the next day Twitter was filled and the wait went five hours to take your picture with Figment. With this Epcot abomination Sunday. Figment? Oh, my goodness. Five hours it got up to, and eventually they had to close the close the line. And then there's videos that came out on Twitter. This cat, wherever they've got him in some tunnel, and that costume is too unwieldy because he keeps wiping out. Like, Figment comes out, and he's like, oh, all <laughs> over. <laughs> and then the handlers have to come and help him up. And everyone goes, oh, what's happening? So it's like a, it's a whole disaster. But um, yeah, there are so many videos of all these it. Diz Twitter influ influencers Ugh. getting their picture taken with Figment. And you're just like, come. It's not like, guys, it's so weird. But in a, it, once all the influencers are done, probably by this Friday, yeah. the, the line's going to be five minutes for Figment. Who cares? It's almost like if you want to do the world <laughs> a favor, just a announce a new weird esoteric character. Wait for all the Disney influencers to go wait in line and then drop a bomb on the place. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> because the, the the weird like economy that has sprung up around Disney online things. I mean, I know, you know, we're a show we get paid, you know, we get sponsors and whatever. We talk about Disney, but it's not it's the fake. It's the fake the fakeness that I don't like. It's the the sanitized, created. Inauthentic joy that these people think that they're showcasing about the parks and about the experiences. And it's so obviously fake. And I don't understand why other people watch it and engage in it because it's not real. It's not that everybody looks the same. All the, all the women have the same, you know, blended makeup and they look, they, they are cookie cutter of one another because that's what they, that they've been watching other people they copy the exact thing. And then eventually it's like training AI 
eventually all the stuff is just going to be written by the same thing. It's all going to sound the same. We're all going to look the same. All these influencers look the same. They all say the same thing. They all do the camera. Ah, I'm at Disneyland. I got to get a nice treat for Disney. Huh? <laughs> cute. I'm so cute. Ooh, look at this merch. It's so great. It's all the same. Why do we do Like, why is, why does this exist? It can't, it's not entertaining. Why can't. This- I don't. I don't understand why it exists, but these people, they rack up the followers. And I've seen people, they're eating the same cheddar cheese soup from the Canada Pavilion that we've been eating since 2004. It's the same stuff. <laughs> That's you walk around this food and wine festival, nothing's, and they're like, hmm, I, I, I was there. The last time I was there, I'm walking out of the park because I was like, I've had it. I'm getting out of here. I'm not staying for any fireworks. I just want, I want to go home and drink a martini on my terrace because I just don't want to be here. That's how great I, how much I love this park. And as I'm walking out, I see, a girl and she's like, you know, she's got her phone. She's like, here I am at Epcot and we're about to try our newest. It's like, what are you doing? I will Who's s- watching that a-, a lot of people. And that's what bugs me. <laughs> and I will say that it, it's got to be when you run across people like that, it ruins the experience of being in the park. Like these people who do this in the park, who, who tape stuff. It they don't care about other people. They don't care that they're ruining the experience for everybody else. Now I have to sit and listen to your stupid act because you're eating cheddar soup. Great. Cool. (laughs) How about, how about not do that? There's one, there's one, there's one person I've ever seen that doesn't do that. I mean, she'll like do it, you know, but she's quiet about it. She's reserved about it. She's not like on a, basically on a bullhorn going, "Ah!" you know, and like broadcasting to the world. I don't like it. I guess they're just the opposite side of the coin of this show because we're yeah, we're negative still talking about the same crap. We're just like not we there are. and not happy about it. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's interesting? Watching the chat from the stream uh, on Saturday, there were a lot of people jumping in and sort of poo pooing things, and there were a lot of people going, "Oh, if you're why are you so negative? I can't. This chat's so negative. Everyone's so negative." And people were very stoked about the weirdest, mildest shit stuff and um i sort of thought about and i thought about us and i thought about me specifically and and this show and opinions and whatever and you know i'm 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 thinking it's not negativity if you love something enough if you like if you're interested in it you're gonna look at the stuff you don't like and you're gonna talk about it and you're gonna question it and that's all we're doing and and people in the chat they weren't even being very negative like wow this doesn't look very good so for us to sit here and say that figment doesn't look great it's not being negative it's just, it's pointing out a fact that it doesn't look great. Like the proportions are off and, and Disney is very weird, this fandom. And I think it's not just Disney. I think Taylor Swift fans are like this. I feel like yes. Beyonce fans are like this. There's a lot of people that are like this. Game of Thrones fans are like this too. Walking Dead. If you point out things that are obviously not kosher or coherent with what the thing is trying to portray these diehard fans. It's almost like you're offending them. It's very That's exactly odd because these people have made Disney their identity. Disney is not only the, and it's not only their identity, it's their religion and people yeah. defend religion against all logic. It requires it because there's not a lot logical about yeah. religion. And that's part of what, you know, if you're a person of faith, like that's sort of what it takes. That's why they say it's faith. But if you have taken this on as your personality and you have bumper stickers and you, every picture of you has ears on and your your <laughs> the sign in your kitchen says, in this house, we let it go. And we, you know, like those, have you seen that on Etsy? No. In this house, we, and it's written in that Disney font and it says like all the things, it's like ly- lyrics from every song will be like, we always smile and we let it go and we march to, and like, you have now made this your personality. So if someone comes along and says it's not that great, they are you are going to take that on as a criticism of you because you this is you this is who you've defined yourself as now yeah so i i understand why they do it i think it's completely lunatic (laughs) speaking of things that are uh good to defend and good to consume summer is here and our friends the 21st amendment are celebrating the return of the warmer days with their popular and everyone's favorite seasonal beer hell or high watermelon wheat The brewers at the 21st Amendment brew an American wheat beer with real watermelon juice, creating a refreshing, fruity, and quenching beer, or what they affectionately call summer in a can. Hell or High Watermelon Wheat will make any weekend barbecue or beach time activity that much better. So get it before the summer's gone, everybody. 
And when coming out here to the California Bay Area, be sure to visit or be sure to stop in at the 21st Amendment's San Francisco Brew Pub at 563 Second Street, just two blocks from Giant Stadium. And also, be sure to visit the Brewery Tap Room just across the bay in San Leandro with an outdoor beer garden. It grows beer, Jeremy. All right, I'm talking. Do you want me to tell me? Do you want me to read you? Well, first, I'm going to before I tell you my story, uh, which is brief. I'm going to read you a full in this house Disney sign. Oh, please do. You can get these on Etsy. You You also get them on Amazon. You have my address, I'm sure. I'm totally getting you this. In this house, we let it go because of Hakuna Matata and all the bare necessities will always be our guide to infinity and beyond. All it takes is faith, trust, and a little bit of pixie dust. We believe in happy endings, okay? And we know that life is always better under the sea because in this house, we do Disney. What the? That's so... I'm going to tell you something, though. I'm nervous. Well, hold on. Hold on. Because someone probably has this. Song I bet you, you know, for sure. Well, of course. That's just, you know, I'd like to think our, our crew, our listeners are from every point on the spectrum of Disney fandom. We do have a lot of very passionate Disney fans who will probably roast you specifically for this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but somehow you get away with it. Probably Kimmy. I get the hate mail and the listener drops, but you can get away with it because you're likable. I'm but, sure no, someone on Twitter this weekend, someone said I'm yeah. an a hole <gasps> just for a tweet. Someone re- retweeted it and said, "This what an a hole," and then someone else said, "Like what a moron!" Like what a moron! <laughs> what was the tweet? <laughs> but you know what? They can't tell my wonderful personality over Twitter. That's right. What was the tweet? The one where I was complaining about how Epcot got screwed over with its um frozen ride <laughs> imagine being called an a-hole and a moron for expressing your opinion about a park about a theme and park ride like, i know come like, on dude yeah i think well it shows who the real a-hole is yeah me but also my comment was about hong kong but it was all the disneyland paris people i got people from disneyland paris were going crazy on me on twitter because they have a complex about it because they're getting the same land so i was just saying like Hong Kong doesn't deserve this. <laughs> Disney World does. I said I didn't say that exactly, but that was the gist. And but the Paris people got their uh, panties in a ruffle because they <laughs> basically Cause, cause took, they took that on Jeez, because um, they're getting it too, and so they they took that. I even love it. it. Wasn't directed at them. I so I loved so it. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, this is too good. So, um, well, speaking of Paris, yeah. <clears throat> this is my news: is that on Jan. Gen- after a long closure, the Disneyland Paris, the Disneyland Hotel at Disneyland Paris will finally be reopening after, I think, almost a three year long closure for a refurbishment. It closed, I think, in March of 2021. OK. And so now finally opening January 25th, 2024, they have released images of it. And I'm going to tell you, here's where I will not be negative, because I have been very critical of what Disney has done to the hotels in Disney World and made them very bland. And they all look like a West Elm. Yeah. They didn't do that here. They've almost gone to the other extreme. It's so gaudy and over the top, like Palace of Versailles in there. Like you like the beds are all covered in those fabrics and like, you know, like <laughs> like Louis the 16th bed and Marie Antoinette. Like it's so the like. like overly french with the curves there is no detail missed it is it's rococo in style there's it's so overly done i absolutely love it it's full on immersion. <laughs> why am i not surprised it look because it looks like no other hotel you are ever going to stay at in the world wow. it doesn't look like a, ho- a home two suites by hill and i think they've absolutely knocked it out of the park i'm looking at the pictures I think it looks fantastic. Even the lobby. The lobby has a few elements that I think are a bit too modern, given the way the, the styling of the bedrooms looks literally like Louis the Sixteenth's bedroom. But I'm going to take it fine. I think overall it just looks absolutely wonderful. And I'm thrilled. I'm also thrilled because now I've never stayed there, but this hotel is very unique because it's actually the entrance to the park you walk under it and so yeah. a lot of the rooms have views down main street i mean it's fantastic god i would love that oh absolutely amazing love that. bar that has a pianist outside so i'm hoping heist van winkelhoff will be back soon he's the pianist who does his sunday live uh, he's been doing it all through covid he does his live piano request show he was always playing there so hopefully he'll be back 
outside of the lounge where I like to get a little old fashioned or in Manhattan. And so I'm just really thrilled that this is back. It's a beautiful hotel. It looks, it actually kind of has a grand Floridian look from the outside, but it's mm. definitely a landmark hotel. And um, how about this? Keeping praise of, upon the Imagineers. Yeah. Sounds great. Like Zach Ridley. If um, you, well, you have to be able to afford, I think, something like at least $900 a night because that's oh how much it is. God, yeah. But also kind of, I mean, if you're already going there, might as well be worth it. Might as well be worth it. But also, I think that's still less than the new Pixar Pier Hotel, which is not as well themed as so, Disneyland Hotel. Tara and I have been mm. lo- uh, Disneyland Hotel Paris, you were saying. Yes. Yeah. So we were planning our trip in January, getting prices, and concierge level at the Disneyland hotel was eight fifty a night at the Disneyland hotel in Anaheim. Anaheim. Yeah. Yeah. Paradise pier was slightly less than that. paradise pier should not be more than two twenty five a night. Yeah. And that's the it. high season, by the yeah. way, like what are they doing? Who is Who paying that? <laughs> I don't know, man. Here's the thing. I just, I just figured it out Esplanade in Disneyland. Get rid of it. Build a hotel. Right in the middle, and be very small hotel. Yeah, high, so you can have every high. room as a theme. Oh, as a, you're as a high. The, as, high as a the, as a view of the Main Street either side, right? Buena sure. Vista Street and Main Street, and uh, Esplanade will be a tunnel, so be shaded. So everyone would appreciate it down on the ground level. I don't know how you at the logistics. I'll let the master to work it out. I have no idea. The parking lot would be insane. You have to dig way underground. Who cares about an Esplanade hotel? There you go, right there. All right. I think you, you're on to something. Thanks, Jeremy. Okay. Well, before we leave, I, I have a yes. real quick quiz for you. Oh. We're talking about San Francisco. Yes. Which big, which big Hero 6 character are you most like, Jeremy? <laughs> By the way, I'm, I'm, instead of doing this, instead of like talking about the JPEG Iger story that we already talk, kind of talked about, whatever, I want to do this because I, I know you've yeah. never seen the movie. And I think it'd be very funny just anyway. I've so, absolutely seen Big Hero 6. Have you? you? Sure. Were, oh, well, this isn't as funny anymore. Mm. I didn't think you've seen it. <laughs> you've seen this, but not Indiana Jones. I don't like you. Big Hero 6 is... <laughs> I don't Big like Hero you. Six is you're not good. a real person. You are not. You are an alien. Uh, you're like, an Earth Girls are easy. You're trying to assimilate into our culture, but you can't do it. Yeah. I'm from France. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> the Gonads. <laughs> we come from France. Okay, well, here you go. Oh, and drop my ring, whatever. Uh, which, super he- which superpower would you rather have, Jeremy? Okay. The ability to make super armor? The ability to heal? The ability to move fast on wheels or to breathe fire? Oh, I guess heal. What is your most formidable skill? Computer engineering? Mm-hmm. Comforting people? No. Uh, mechanical mm. engineering or staying calm? Com- computer engineering. Okay. What would you most like to invent? A way off this show? No. Um, microbots? <laughs> <laughs> a new way to heal people? A bike that goes fast? Or a large lizard? First of all, you can't invent a large lizard. What does that <laughs> mean? What the- Where did you find this quiz? On the D23 website. Well, also, there, it's kind of obvious what the who I'm going to be. Yeah. Or like you can you could pick who you're going to be. Like, it's not like you're going to not know. They're all pretty obvious. Well, and it's like saying, like, always- which character in The Little Mermaid are you? Are you obsessed with humans? <laughs> are you red? Do you follow the and- rules? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can you sing? So go on. Or what do you want to invent? Have a garden of people as hostages. <laughs> bike robots, a way to heal people, a bike that goes fast, or a large lizard. What do you want to invent? Microbots. You want to invent microbots. Okay. How yeah. are you most helpful to the people around you? You can build robots. You can listen to people's feelings. You can be honest with people, or you can be a non-judgmental person for others to come to. Um, D non-judgmental. <laughs> That's not true. I know. Why? I, I'm, I ooze judgment. What kind of student are you, Jeremy? Are you an overachiever? Do you enjoy researching information on the web about different <laughs> subjects? You work hard on projects you're passionate about, or you don't like school, but enjoy learning on your own? I work hard on pa- projects I'm passionate about. How do you come off to others? Angsty, sweet, edgy, or laid back? 
angsty? I don't know. All right, sure, man. What holds you back the most? You doubt yourself? You need to recharge a lot? You're guarded or you're unmotivated? Ooh, I doubt myself. You do? You don't, yes. you don't come off like that at all. What color mm-hmm. do you like wearing the most? The last one. Purple, red, yellow, or green? Blue. That's not one of the choices. Okay, green then. All right, you are Hiro Hamada. I knew I was going to be Hiro. You're a brainy whiz at school who might have graduated early or been an overachiever. But, uh, how, how are those different, by the way? If you graduate early, <laughs> uh, d- 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 by default, you're an overachiever. Your biggest skill is computer engineering, and you are capable of building microbots or super armor for your friends with ease. In your spare time, you like to construct robots and fight them against each other. Although you might doubt yourself, your inventions are epic. I thought I was going to be dead brother. (laughs) You are dead brother. You are very cold to people around you. Uh, Well, that quiz was fun. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Figured you you did. I mean, back to the show. Wrong one. That CNBC article had me enthralled last week. Oh, about Iger, the Iger JPEG drama about the shower and everything. Oh, the shower. So I talked about it briefly at the end of our last main show, which is on Thursday, which I haven't published yet because I had audio problems. Um, But it was with Aaron Goldberg. You know who that is? The author, Aaron Goldberg. Does he live in Florida? He does. Did I meet him? I, I can't tell you that secret. I told him I would never tell you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But he wrote um, Buying Disney's Land, this great book here. Um, oh, I've seen that. I wanted to read that, actually. It's fantastic. Buying Disney's World. Buying Disney's yeah. World. Sorry. Excuse me. Yes. Buying Disney's World. Um, it's a fantastic read. You, can, you could probably do it in one sitting, maybe two. It's, it's thin, but it pulls you along. It's a fantastic book. But I, I covered this story at the end of that show, and it was... Uh, I don't know, man. It made me laugh so hard. It's just it makes Iger look just the most petty. It's like I the pettiest it, person in the entire universe. It really paints him in a bad light. It really does. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but Aaron, I reached out to him and he heard about our show through streaming Spectra Radio. And he says he streams Spectra Radio all the time. Well, Aaron. And he follow I think he follow him on Twitter. He follows you on Twitter or something like that. The name is very familiar, yeah. which is why I'm like, I know, <laughs> I feel like this is uh, so, someone I do interact with perhaps on Twitter. Yeah. I don't think he was um, hating on me last no. week. Oh, yeah. Maybe he wasn't one of those. I almost, I no, thought about getting those you, the French. reaching out to you and seeing if you wanted to be on for, for that show. And I probably should have, but I, I want to buy another one of his books and have him back on. So if you want to, if you want to come on for that and talk to him, he's a very uh, Disney world focused young man. Yes. Well, that would be fascinating. And um, I would love it. I, w- I love to read about Disney books. I am working on a spectro time segment. I think it's oh, going to be a full episode. I love it. It's yeah. Aaron, so Aaron was super I had, cool. And he was like, yeah, let's come on and just talk. I don't care. I'm like, All right. great. Yeah. And did so. he have, a, so he had a lot of, I mean, he's done research on how oh, Walt, yeah. Uh, like how he bought all that property and he got he got access to the records of the lawyers who worked on it and like he you know he's talking about reaching out i was trying to go for a second talking about like people in the book uh a uh, uh, family of of people in the book reaching out to him after reading the book and was like yeah my dad did this or my dad was that or my uncle was whatever wow. and he's like it's just wild man so he has a new book now, out now i think it's called presenting disneyland and he bought a bunch of slides, images um, on auction that have never been seen before of like opening day and whatever. Oh, that sounds amazing. I would Dude. love to see those. I mean, I troll yeah. eBay all the time looking for this and, oh, yeah, you know, old never, pictures and stuff yeah. like that because I want them and um, just never find I want them. them. Yeah. You just want well, they're really expensive. I know. That's why it's like, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but even if you just look it up, like, I think it's called Presenting Disneyland. And just the first image will blow your mind. It'll blow your wig way back because it's just, it's a scaffolding in front of the thing. And it just, they're setting up for something. And it just looks, and they're in color, which I think uh-huh. a lot of the, a lot of the pics from that time weren't in color. So it's, yeah. it's a whole different view of parks and it's a coffee Amazing. table book. So it's like 50 bucks. But, um, oh, wow. But yeah, I don't know, Aaron. It was, it's a great book. Buying Disney's World is it is a good book. We're getting out of here. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate it for what was another yet another D twenty three recap show. I, I liked like it. it. I didn't have to do any fun. work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me either. To be honest with you, because I already did it on Saturday, man. I woke up too early. 
I was in a bad mood, too. And I'm sort of glad there was no stream on Sunday. I was like, man, I, I, I want to do this stuff, but I kind of like, I don't know. No one, I don't know. It just felt I know felt I woke weird up and, you're, and I see a text from you. You're like, wake up and come join me on the stream. And I was like, <laughs> first of all, I didn't say it like that. I didn't say, wake up and come and join me you're on like, the stream. Hey, I was like, wake, wake up. up. You were like, you sent me a text that said, you up? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what you doing? It says, yeah. I don't know. And I was like, I don't want to do it. I just didn't want to. That's fine. You don't have, you didn't have to. Alice joined <laughs> me. So if you want to go back, you guys can watch on YouTube. I left them all out. Um, yeah, that's it. We're getting out of here. So thank you everybody for tuning in. I will drop that Aaron Goldbrick episode tomorrow. Ooh. Um, and that will be good. I'm almost done with it. So, um, yeah, it was great. It was a fascinating talk. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Anyway, thanks a lot for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you.